This video will walk you through the process of replacing the battery on an iPhone 12 Pro. The process of this repair is almost identical to a battery replacement on an iPhone 12, and while this video can be used as a reference, we still recommend using the guide specific to your device on ifixit.com. For this repair you'll need an eye opener, a set of iFixit opening picks, a suction cup or ice clack, a spudger, some tweezers, some isopropyl alcohol, and the following drivers. A Phillips double zero, a P2 pentalope, a Y triple zero, a standoff driver for iPhone, and a SIM eject tool. You'll also need your replacement battery, and if they're not pre-installed, a set of battery adhesive strips. After this repair, your iPhone may display a warning about the genuineness of your new battery, even when using an original Apple part. If your iPhone functions normally, you can safely ignore this warning. Before you begin your repair, make sure that your battery has been discharged to below 25%. A charged lithium-ion battery can be a fire hazard if accidentally punctured. To begin, make sure your iPhone is completely powered off, and then insert your SIM eject tool or paperclip into the small hole in the SIM card tray. Press firmly to eject the tray, and then remove it. Using your P2 Pentalope driver, remove the two screws on the bottom edge of the iPhone. To get the front panel off, we'll need to soften the adhesive holding it in place. Using a prepared eye opener, heat up the bottom edge of the phone. If you don't have an eye opener, a hair dryer or heat gun can be used. Just be very careful, as you run the risk of overheating and damaging your iPhone. For the next few steps, we'll be using an ice clack to separate the front panel from the case. If you don't have an ice clack, check out our step-by-step -step guides for instructions on how to do this procedure with just a suction cup. Once your phone is heated, place the suction cups of the ice clack near the bottom edge of the phone, one on the front side and one on the back. Press the ice clack to engage the suction cups, and then close it to begin separating the screen from the iPhone's case. Don't be surprised if your screen doesn't budge the first time you try this. The iPhone screen is glued on tight, but repeated sessions of heating and prying will get the job done. As soon as you see a gap between the screen and the case, insert one of your opening picks into the gap. Don't try and completely remove the screen yet, we're just getting started and this gap is all we need for now. Making sure not to insert your pick more than a few millimeters, slide the inserted opening pick around the left corner and up the left edge of the iPhone, slicing through the adhesive, holding the display in place. Once you've made it to the top edge, remove your pick and insert it back into the gap on the bottom edge. Now, we'll repeat our pick sliding along the right edge of the iPhone. With the sides of the display released from adhesive, it's time to turn our attention to the top edge. Slide your pick along the top edge of the display to cut away the adhesive. Swing your display up from the right side like you're opening a book, but be careful, the display is connected to the iPhone's logic board by several fragile cables. Prop your display up at about a 90 degree angle using something like your iPhone's box to hold it in place. Using your Y000 driver, remove the two screws securing the battery and display connector cover. The screws in the iPhone 12 Pro are exceptionally small, so make sure you have an organization system like one of our magnetic mats to keep track of them. Using your tweezers, remove the cable cover, and then using the pointed edge of a spudger, disconnect the battery, digitizer, and display cables. Make sure to bend the battery cable back slightly to prevent accidental contact with its connector. Once again, grab your Y000 driver and remove the four screws securing the front sensor connector cover. One of these screws is longer than the others, so make sure to make a note where all the screws came from. Attempting to reinsert the screws in the wrong location can damage your iPhone. Using some tweezers, remove the cable connector cover and then use your spudger to disconnect the front sensor assembly cable connector. Now, the display can lift right off. To access the battery, we need to remove a few components, starting with the loudspeaker. Using your Phillips driver, remove the four screws securing the speaker in place, and then use some tweezers to lift it out. Grab your Y000 driver and remove the two screws securing the SIM card reader connector cover and then use your tweezers to lift it up and out. Using the pointed edge of a spudger, disconnect the SIM card reader cable from its connector on the logic board and then use your Y000 driver to remove the three screws securing the SIM card reader. Once those are removed, the bracket can come right out. With that bracket removed, we now have access to the final screw holding the SIM card reader in place and it's a standoff screw. If you don't have access to a standoff bit, a flathead driver can be used in a pinch. Just use extra caution when removing the screw. Now, use your tweezers to remove the SIM card reader. Disconnect the Taptic Engine's cable using the pointed end of your spudger, and then remove the three screws securing the Taptic Engine to the case. Two of the screws are standoff, and one is a Phillips. Use your tweezers to lift the Taptic Engine out. Now, we can finally get to the battery. The battery is glued down by four adhesive strips, two on the bottom and two on the top. Each of these strips has a black pull tab that is taped to the battery. 
Use a pair of blunt tweezers to peel back the pull tabs on all four battery adhesive strips. Grab the first pull tab with your fingers and slowly pull it away from the battery. You'll need to pull hard enough to maintain tension on the strip, but don't force it. If an adhesive strip breaks off, try and retrieve it using your fingers or blunt tweezers and continue pulling, but don't pry under the battery. If you can't retrieve the broken strip, use a little isopropyl alcohol under the battery to loosen the adhesive. Once all four pull tabs are removed, the battery can lift right out. When installing a new battery, you'll need to glue it back in place. If your new battery didn't include pre-installed adhesive strips, check out our video on removing and reapplying battery adhesive. Insert your new battery making sure its cable is properly aligned with its connector and then firmly press it into place to engage the adhesive. Reinstall your Taptic engine and screw in the three screws to secure it to the rear case. Align the Taptic engine cable connector to its socket and then use the pointed end of a spudger to press it into place. Reinsert your SIM card reader and then reinstall the standoff screw next to the Taptic engine cable connector. Place the Taptic engine cable connector bracket in place and then reinstall the two screws securing it. Next, install one more screw at the top of the SIM card reader and then connect its cable to the logic board. Reinstall the SIM card reader cable connector cover and screw it into place. Place the loudspeaker back into the phone and reinstall the four screws that secure it to the rear case. Reinstall your display adhesive and then prop your phone up at a 90 degree angle alongside your phone, making sure its cables line up with the connectors on the logic board. Press the front sensor cable into its socket and then press the cable connector cover over it. Reinstall the four screws that hold it in place, making sure you're installing the screws into the same slots they came from. Press the digitizer cable, display cable, and the battery cables back into their sockets, and then place the cable connector cover in place and reinstall the two Y000 screws. Before you reinstall your display, take a moment to power your phone on and make sure everything is working properly. If everything is working, go ahead and remove your display adhesive backing, and reinstall your display by first aligning the display with the clips along the top edge, and then carefully pressing the display back into place making sure the clips click easily in place. Lastly, reinstall the two pentalobe screws at the bottom of the phone, and then insert your SIM card tray. 